Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams, and today we have a very special show. We are celebrating the election and recent electoral college confirmation of Kamala Harris as the next vice president of the United States. My distinguished guests will share their reactions to this historical event and lend their thoughts on what the impact of electing the nation's first Black woman vice president will likely be for the future of Black women in politics. Joining me today for this conversation is Dr. Christina Greer, author and associate professor of political science at Fordham University in New York City, Wisconsin State Senator Lena Taylor, representing the 4th Senate District. And I am also proud to have with us Wisconsin State Representative Lakeisha Myers, representing Assembly District 12. She is a dedicated educator, and they all are fighters in the world of politics. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Andrea. How are you? I am so happy to have you all here. And I'm interested to uh, hear about your thoughts on dealing with this Kamala factor. So just to make sure we get everybody's thoughts. Uh, first, I'll start with you, uh, Senator Taylor. Uh, tell us what you, you were thinking when all of this was really uh, becoming a reality. You know, I have to say uh, having um, my soror, the U.S. Senator, um, and now Vice President-elect Kamala Harris uh, on the ticket, it made the rise of conversations around criminal justice. It made the rise of issues that matter uh, for Black people and Black women. Uh, it made all of those things come to the forefront. But I have to say something that it did that I feel is much more powerful and long-lasting is it created a energy and a, um, a, a work that our sororities and other Greek organizations did connected to um, the election and the ongoing process of people getting appointed and the transition. We are now following the process, I think in a way um, that in my 17 years as an elected that I have to say, I think is much more rich than ever before. Yes, and I have to mention just a side note that uh, Representative Myers and myself, we are all members of Alpha Kappa Alpha, as well as you, Senator Taylor. So, uh, hey, representing today in every sense of the word, but Senator Taylor, you grew up uh, on the block where you live right now. And I also think it's important to mention you were the first African-American woman and second African-American to co-chair the powerful and influential joint committee on finance, that's uh, something that has to be said. So uh, Representative Myers, I want you to kind of talk about the Kamala factor and how you feel it will help make a difference with young people in particular, uh, black women coming up in the world of politics from here on out. I think it made it a, a really big difference. Uh, when you look at the fact that 93% of African-American women uh, traditionally vote democratically, um, it was time uh, for us to have uh, and to show our political acumen and have the party to uh, support us by having an African-American woman not only on the ticket, but then it also showed the political acumen that we often wield in our households by being the X factor. Um, usually young people listen to their mothers, their aunts, their sisters, um, older women in their family to tell them who to vote for when it's the first time. I can remember my first political, you know, my first time voting. And I was like, mom, wh who do I vote for? She was like, this person, and this is why. <laughs> and she gave me kind of that robust information that I needed to know about who was actually running for office. So I think that does a lot. When you look at it from a younger uh, perspective, I think this is kind of, um, there's a, a picture that often circulates online where you see a young woman, African-American girl looking in the mirror. And there's usually a picture of someone else there. I see that being the case uh, with this. With Kamala being on, the, uh, being the vice president elect, this opens up a new world to African American girls um, and and other little girls of color as well, because you can now see yourself reflected in, uh, in you know, in politics in this way. For so long, even after the period of Reconstruction, African American men had the right to vote, but it's been women who have been carrying that vote across the finish line for so long. Yes, indeed. And I have to mention a side note for you. You toppled a Goliath, so to speak, by beating an entrenched incumbent. 
uh, when you took office. And um, you also recently appeared on this show to talk about uh, presenting the Crown Act to legislators in Madison with the help of legislators like State Senator Taylor. You all came together and that is still a fight we're keeping our eye on. So thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Greer, I really want you to talk a little bit about, as an academic and author, you spent a great deal of your research analyzing the intersections of race, gender, and ethnicity and their impact on politics. In your book, Black Politics in Transition, Immigration, Suburbanization, and Gentrification, you extend your focus and work to address local forces like gentrification and suburbanization, which are two forces uh, we're very familiar with here in Milwaukee. Uh, how do those forces uh, and the patterns related to them impact the future of Blacks in politics? Well, when we think about the pipeline uh, to the presidency, so as we have Blacks being pushed out of cities and gentrification and suburbanization, we know that we take someone like Mike Brown uh, you know, he wasn't from the city of St. Louis, he was from Ferguson, which is a suburb outside of St. Louis. And so when we think about our state legislators and our state senators uh, getting elected in diverse places across the state, and then possibly moving up through the pipeline to go to Congress and representing even more diverse uh, groups of people, we have to sort of remember that uh, Black identity is uh, a myriad of, of different identities now with Black immigrants, people who are 15th, 16th generation, uh, we're in states that, you know, are <laughs> all 50 states, right? We have a robust Black population in Alaska. Um, and so when we think about, say, utilizing Jesse Jackson's 50-state strategy from 1984 and 1988, let's say if a Black woman runs for the presidency again, uh, we can think about how we can mobilize Black people, uh, not just in urban centers, but in suburban places as well, uh, in, in a real robust 50-state strategy. But I think the key that I, I want all of us to, to always remember is like we have to keep building the pipeline and make sure that it's not a leaky pipeline. Uh, mm -hmm. And we've seen, you know, the divine nine step up, right? It wasn't just that uh, Kamala Harris was an AKA, which my mother's an AKA, my dad's a Q, uh, but it was, it was the Qs, it was the Kappas, it was the Deltas, right? Shirley yes. Chisholm was the Delta, um, yes. you know, who, who came together. I can't forget the Sigmas, my grandfather was a Sigma. Um, <laughs> but, you know, all the divine nine came together to make sure that this happened. So I, I, you know, we, we understand that this is a collective effort, not just geographically, but we saw it across class, we saw it across ethnicity, and we definitely saw black men stepping up to elevate a black woman to the vice presidency of the United States. Yes, and we all talk about how 2020 has just been such a rough year, but the silver lining for me is I had an opportunity to interview uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, as well as Stacey Abrams uh, this, this year. So that is good enough for me, right? But uh, I just wanted to thank you all for the work that you put in. I do wish that we had more time because you're all amazing and you all inspire in so many ways. Wanted to shout out uh, Alderwoman Malele Coggs who does uh, Girls at City Hall, which is another way to really uh, embrace young ladies and let them know that they too can be a part of the great work that you are doing, State Representative and Senator Taylor. I, I, I thank you all so much for your time today. And that is going to do it for the show. Dr. Christina Greer, she's a noted author and associate professor of political science at Fordham University in New York City. Wisconsin State Senator Lena Taylor represents the fourth Senate district and State Representative Lakeisha Myers, she represents the 12th Assembly District. A special thank you to my guest co-producer, Melissa Thornton, who's a grad student at Fordham University in New York. That's gonna do it for today's show. As always, thank you for watching. And I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look Look at our issues in Milwaukee. Have a great day and happy new year. And what a testament it is to Joe's character that he had the audacity to break one of the most substantial barriers that exists in our country and select a woman as his vice president. But while I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last.